Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. Today I would like to introduce a simulation study that we did uh, to compare the unilateral and bilateral cochlear implants for speech recognition in spatialized noise. So let's background. We know that for normal hearing listeners, uh, when they listen to speech that is spatially separated from the background noise, it is easier compared to the situation where the speech and the noise are co-located. This is called spatial release from masking, and uh, can be, this type of benefit can be predicted by a model of binaural unmasking and better ear listening. And uh, many studies have uh, demonstrated that in real cochlear implant patients, um, this benefit of bilateral cochlear implants occurred uh, over a situation where uh, the patients use only one of their cochlear implants. And uh, the SRM uh, model also predicts uh, this difference between the bilateral versus unilateral cochlear implants under a steady state noise situation. However, we know that testing real CI patients can be costly and time consuming sometimes. Um, and the current SRM model has not uh, included prediction on the effect of informational masking on binaural listening. And so the current study wants to use a simulation on the effect of bilateral and unilateral cochlear implants and look into how that will impact uh, spatial release from masking. On one hand, we want to uh, see whether simulation can replicate uh, data from real CI patients. And on the other hand, uh, to investigate the additional impact of informational masking um, and provide data for SRM model to be improved. So the study uses a two by three by three within subject design, where we compare the implanted side, it's you know, either unilateral or bilateral, with three masker types, uh, steady state noise, speech modulated noise, and a single talker interferer for informational masking. We also have three masker locations, um, <coughs> negative 90 degrees, which is uh, on the same side of the uh, implanted uh, ear of the unilateral condition, and zero degree, which is noise right in the front, and positive 90 degree, which is noise on the right. So we use the IEEE sentences as the target speech. And we also include a steady state noise, which is spectrally shaped to match the long-term average spectrum of the target speech. Then we modulate uh, the amplitude modulated noise using the speech envelope of seven uh, sentences from the CUNY uh, sentence list. And we also use the same seven sentences, uh, CUNY sentences as the single talker interferer. To process the stimuli, we uh, convolve the signal or the noise uh, with the HRTF that has been derived from a behind-the-ear hearing aid microphones, and uh, we mix the signal and the noise at designated signal-to-noise ratio, and then vocal the stimuli to simulate the eye acoustic effect. Then we disable the right channel output for the unilateral cochlear implant condition. This is the parameter of the cochlear implant simulator that we used. So to test the participants, we need to make sure that they can reach at least 80% correct uh, in the training stage uh, within 80 sentences. And then uh, they will go through the one-down-one -one of adaptive procedure to uh, determine the speech recognition threshold as their outcome measure. And we have nine participants with normal hearing joint study. So in overall, the bilateral cochlear implant outperformed the unilateral conditions, um, but they also depend on the type of noise that they have used. Um, so for noise that's uh, steady state or spectrally, uh, sorry, speech modulated, um, the, the bilateral benefit is more obvious, especially when the noise is either co-located with the speech or is on the same side of the implanted side of the unilateral condition. However, um, this difference is slightly uh, less obvious when you are looking at the noise that's located um, on the contralateral side of the implant, the unilateral implant side. Um, and also in, 
in the speech, the single talker uh, interferer, um, the binaural summation effect from the binaural, bilateral cochlear implant seems to be diminished. Um, specifically, if you look at zero degree uh, in the STI condition, uh, the unilateral and cochlear implant and bilateral implants perform very similarly. If you look at the bilateral implant uh, condition alone, you can see that for um, noise that's co-located with the speech, the performance is uh, worse compared to the situation where the noise is separated spatially from the speech. For unilateral condition, um, we don't get to see the uh, spatial release from masking when the when the noise is uh, on the same side as the implanted ear, um, and so the performance at ni negative 90 degree uh, is either the same or even worse compared to uh, when the noise is co-located with the speech. And if we look at the effect of the mask or tight, we will notice that the regardless of um, the implanted side or the mask or locations, the performance was always the best um, for steady state noise followed by uh, you know, speech modulated noise and, uh, and worst in the single talker interferer where the informational masking is playing a role. And unlike normal hearing listeners who usually perform better uh, in modulated noise compared to steady state noise, um, the cochlear implant uh, simulated effect diminished uh, um, the dip listening that people can use uh, for listening in modulated noise and, um, and probably uh, increased the amount of in, uh, modulation masking um, when they listen to speech in modulated noise. Therefore, um, you know, it's probably the reason why the, the performance in speech modulated noise uh, is worse than in steady state noise. So this study does show that bilateral cochlear implant situation can make use of you know, spatial release from masking and binaural summation to improve uh, speech recognition in in noise that's either uh, that's either spatially separated or co-located with the speech um, compared to unilateral condition. However, the binaural, binaural advantage is uh, less useful for bilateral cochlear implant when the masker contains informational masking. And uh, we also show that the amount of spatial release from masking observed uh, in the bilateral condition is comparable to previous studies that had the same uh, speech and noise configurations. And uh, it also shows that the CI simulation is successful um, in replicating uh, results from uh, studies that use uh, real CI patients and can probably be uh, coupled with SRM model in the future to predict uh, performance of cochlear implant users. Thank you for listening and please let me know if you have any questions.